Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 293. I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that Prince Andrew has a pretty loose relationship with the truth. This is a man who says he's never even met Virginia Roberts. Yet we have a picture with him and her at Ghislaine Maxwell's house. We have eyewitness reports of them together. And yet, Andrew has provided us with nothing but his narrative. He has not provided one bit of evidence, not one person, to come out and confirm his alibi. Not one person to come out and say, look, I was there that night. This shit never happened. These people are all telling stories. Not one single person has come forward to say anything like that. Meanwhile, as we see cracks begin to develop in the dam, more and more people are coming forward and corroborating the relationship between Andrew and Virginia. Now, if Andrew did not do anything untowards with her, if Andrew was not part of a sex trafficking ring, why would he not admit to at least knowing her? Why would he start off from the very beginning lying? And that's basically what he's done this whole entire time, folks. If you follow the evidence we have available to us, and you follow the interview, and you follow the things that have been said throughout the years, it is quite apparent that Prince Andrew has no idea what the truth even is in this case. You know what? I should rephrase that. Oh, he he knows what the truth is. He knows he doesn't have it on his side. Because the evidence at this point is damning. And like I said, as we move forward in this case, more people are going to come forward. We talked a little bit earlier about Ian Halpern's new book and some of the claims that he's making. And again, we'll have to see how true those claims are or how close to the mark they are before we, you know, just run around and say, oh yeah, here, look at this. This is more evidence. But again, you're seeing more and more of this begin to occur. More people are becoming more comfortable coming forward and talking about people like Prince Andrew and their relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. Tonight, our article is going to add a little bit more context to that and show just a little bit more that Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, is trying to give us the runaround and trying to avoid ever speaking to the authorities about his alleged role in this. Now, this article was sent to me by one of the listeners to the sh- of the show. Uh, her name is Brandy S., and she's doing some really good research on the Jeffrey Epstein case. And I've said it once, I'll say it a million times. The articles that you folks send in to me, the stuff that you send me, there might be things that I have missed, right? Or there might be things that we need to revisit. And this is one of those articles. We've talked a little bit about um, um, the the pilot, right? We talked a lot about um, Vasovsky, but we haven't talk, talked much about uh, David Rogers and his court testimony that put Prince Andrew on the pla- on a plane with Jeffrey Epstein and Virginia Roberts. This is a court document. This isn't just some guy, you know, saying some some stuff to get noticed or anything like that. So you add this up with everything else we already know, and it really starts to paint the picture for you that Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, is straight up telling tales. So again, thanks Brandy S. Thanks to everybody out there who sends me articles. You guys are incredibly awesome. And Brandy, please keep up the great work. All right, our article from The Sun, headline, One Fly With Me. Prince Andrew was on private jet with pedo Jeffrey Epstein and sex slave Virginia Roberts, says pilot. This article was authored by James Beale, Greg Woodfield, and Emily Andrews. It was published on November 18th 
of 2019. Prince Andrew flew on a private plane with pedo friend Jeffrey Epstein and his alleged 17-year-old sex slave Virginia Roberts, the pilot claims. Some pretty big claims, right? And again, if it was just in a vacuum and there were no other accusations, it would be a bad look for Prince Andrew, right? It would be, dude, you're an enabling scuzzbag, you're gross, why are you hanging out with this scumbag Jeffrey Epstein? But it's a whole different thing when you add in the fact that he's being directly implicated in actually taking part in this abuse. The allegation made in court papers is the first to place Andrew and Roberts on Epstein's plane together. So we have them now placed by uh, witnesses on the plane, on the island, in England. So, I mean, come on, folks. Are we to believe that all of these people got together and they're conspiring against Prince Andrew. Why would they do that? Why would this pilot lie? Why would, St- why would uh, Steve Scully lie? Why would those girls who said that they saw Andrew and Virginia in the club at Tramp, why would they lie? Meanwhile, we haven't gotten anything from the prince. We haven't gotten any sort of tangible defense whatsoever. In court testimony, David Rogers, 66, said one trip saw Epstein, Andrew, and then 17-year-old Virginia heading to the U.S. Virgin Islands. And again, Andrew says he doesn't even know Virginia, but you were on a plane with her, you took a picture with her, you're in a club with her, but you don't even know who she is, huh? And you expect people to buy that? And then other people wonder why people are digging deeper into Andrew and want to know more about what went on. It's obvious from just the evidence that we have that this guy is not telling the truth. In my opinion, this man is not telling the truth one single bit. I have not seen one bit of evidence that would point me in the direction of saying, yeah, you know, there, we we got to take a look at the other side here. The evidence that's being produced is pretty uh, strong, so we're going to have to, you know, dig through. There's none of that. Zero. Nothing. Ungats. The financier, pedophile, who killed himself in jail in August ahead of a trial for sex trafficking minors, had a private island there where he is said to have held orgies involving underage girls. And in his explosive interview with BBC's Newsnight, Andrew acknowledged he'd stayed on Epstein's private island, visited his home in Palm Beach, Florida, and traveled on his private plane. Isn't that nice? I don't really know, you know, uh, um, Virginia, but I've been to all of these places where she was a mainstay. I've been around, you know, on the plane with Epstein, to Palm Beach, to New York, uh, you know, you name it. But I don't know Virginia, I never met her. Those pictures, those that's a lie. Those fingers, those are too fat. That couldn't be me. This is the sort of shit they expect us to believe. He said he wanted to learn more about the international business world. And so that was another reason for going to visit the U.S. financier, pedophile, in New York as the prince became special representative for international trade and investment. That's such bullshit. So you mean to tell me there's nobody in the financial sector? In England that you could have talked to to help you out here? There's nobody at all, huh? No great financial minds in England. You had to go and get Jeffrey Epstein to help you out. A man with exactly one client on the books. So what was the draw? Why did you need Jeffrey Epstein to point you in the right direction? Why did you need Jeffrey Epstein to act as your Gandalf? Roger's legal deposition marks the first time anyone has alleged Andrew and Virginia were on Epstein's plane at the same time. Virginia claims Andrew had sex with her when she was a teenager. He has always strenuously denied it. But again, it's all fine and well if it was just the plane, right? How many denials are they going to make from the Andrew side of the equation? How many times are they going to deny things that we can tangibly prove? And how many times are people going to continue to believe that shit? This is obviously, obviously something that occurred. It's obvious that Andrew and Virginia knew each other. 
And it is quite obvious to me, at the very least, in my opinion, that Andrew is lying through his teeth about all of it. Roger's claim will will increase the pressure on Andrew to now reveal everything he knows about Epstein. Now, you have to think, the prosecutors have seen all of this as well, right? They know about the deposition. You have to think that the SDNY knows that Andrew was on this plane. They have the court documents to prove that he was on this plane, with Virginia, by the way. And when they talk to him, they're going to have a bunch of other information that he probably doesn't even know that they have. And that is why his legal team is fighting tooth and nail to keep him out of the chair. They know he's going to perjure himself. It is among 2,000 court documents relating to a settled defamation case involving her and British socialite, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag, Ghislaine Maxwell. Roberts claimed Maxwell, Epstein's sometime girlfriend, groomed underage girls for him. That case was later struck out and the claims have never been tested in court. Pilots Court's Claim Rogers does not allege any wrongdoing by Prince Andrew on the flights. His testimony says he flew Epstein's private jet, which ferried VIP guests including U.S. President Bill Clinton, model Naomi Campbell, and sex scandal Hollywood star Kevin Spacey. And again, this isn't about him corroborating abuse. This is about circumstantial evidence being compiled. They were in each other's company when Andrew said they were not. They were on the plane together. Andrew says that never occurred. Andrew was fondling Virginia, according to Steve Scully. And again, Andrew says nothing like that has ever happened. Well, he says that it never happened. Virginia is adamant that it did. And only one of them has provided any evidence to back up their story. And it most certainly is not the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family. It also claims Andrew was aboard a number of times, including two flights with Virginia. So that's two flights with Virginia that they were together. They met each other. They hung out at the very least. So why did Andrew even lie about that? I hate to reiterate that question, but it's very important that we ask ourselves that. He says the Virgin Islands flight took place on April 11, 2001, with Maxwell also among the guests. Rogers also claims Andrew was on a flight on the 31st of March from Santa Fe, New Mexico to Florida. He says other passengers on the 22-seat Gulfstream jet included Epstein, Maxwell, and Virginia. Now remember, folks, in February... When I went to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I went down to Zorro Ranch and I talked to the sources down there that had reached out to me, they told me the same thing, that Prince Andrew, for sure, 100%, without a doubt, was at Zorro Ranch and in Santa Fe. Without a doubt. And here we go again, hearing about it. More corroborating witnesses, more corroborating stories, and the, the, the quicksand becomes much tougher for Andrew to extricate himself from. I mean, if you're a prosecutor in this case, how do you not look at all of this evidence and not indict this man? He says other, excuse me, royal court circular documents show Andrew had engagements in London on March 28th and April 2nd. So it is possible he could have been on the Epstein plane. Yeah, no shit, it's possible. What do you mean it's possible? I mean, the logs say so, right? Why would this Why would this uh, um, pilot lie about him being on the plane? The, the craziest thing is, is that it's provable, right? We can prove that he was on this plane, that he was in these places. And he won't even be honest about that. Billionaire Jeffrey Epstein killed himself in jail ahead of trial for sex trafficking minors. Buckingham Palace refused to further clarify Andrew's movements over that period. 
On April 9th, Andrew began an official visit to the U.S., arriving in New York that day. Flight logs show Virginia flew to New York with Epstein on April 9th. Boy, that adds up and lines up pretty coincidentally, huh? Pretty funny how that all adds up, how that all lines up. I mean, come on. It is so obvious what was going on here. The prince also flew to Boston for official engagements before returning to New York on April 11th. On that day, Roger says Andrew flew from New Jersey to the Virgin Islands. Court circulars do not state Andrew's whereabouts for the next few days, but a newspaper reports pl- report places him in the Bahamas by April 15th. Huh, another coincidence, I guess, right? I mean, the Bahamas isn't close to the Virgin Islands or anything. I mean, it's not just a hop, skip, and a jump. I mean, bah. I mean, they'd really want us to believe this shit. They really want us to believe, and they really think we're going to believe, that Prince Andrew never met Virginia, never been in her presence, and obviously never did anything that could even be misconstrued as, of, as out of line. Meanwhile, back in reality, we all know there is another narrative, the real narrative, the truth. Rogers also claims that on August 7, 2001, Prince Andrew was on the maiden flight of Epstein's infamous Lolita Express. The Boeing 727 replacing his Gulfstream had a bed which Epstein allegedly used for orgies. The Duke did not have any diary events listed for August 2001. There are also discrepancies in Roger's testimony. He claims Andrew was on a 4th of July 2001 flight from the Virgin Islands to Florida along with Roberts and Epstein. But the Royal Diary shows he was in the UK on that date. Flight logs for the trips do not feature Andrew's name, but the initials AP. So, there's a bit of a... uh, um, discrepancy here, right? I don't know. Do do, do they lie in the royal diary? Are they beyond that at this point? I don't know, folks. To be honest with you, I don't know. I don't have concrete evidence one way or the other about uh, July 4th here, but I don't put it above the royal family to be a um, covering for her Andrew right? Especially back then. They don't want, they didn't want this fallout. They knew the disaster that this would be. So who's to say what they put in that diary? Is there oversight over it? I didn't even know that there was a royal diary, to be honest with you. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. The initials had previously been used for Epstein's designer, Albert Pinto. Rogers identified Andrew in his testimony. The initials AP may have also been used for Epstein's chef, Adam Perry Lang. Billionaire Epstein, 66, hanged himself in jail on August 10th, allegedly. The inquiry is now focusing on several alleged co-conspirators believed to include Maxwell, 57, the daughter of disgraced newspaper tycoon Robert Maxwell. Virginia claims she was held a sex slave by Epstein and trafficked to his friends while a teenager. And we know, obviously, that Maxwell is all also arrested and she is waiting sentencing and they were not screwing around when they said that the co-conspirators were being focused on, obviously. Hopefully there's more. I think there will be. But for now, at the very least, we've seen some movement with Maxwell getting arrested. A source close to Andrew said if law enforcement agencies or police want to talk to the Duke or any royal, they just need to ask. Buckingham Palace said this evidence statement was submitted in a case in which the Duke was not a party and in which any suggestion of impropriety with underage minors is categorically untrue. Boy, how the tune has changed now, huh? The no comments, we're not in charge of the prince's comments anymore, etc., etc. As the fallout grows, the distancing begins. The statements show a number of inconsistencies between the Duke's alleged location and his actual location when checked with the court circular. In some cases, he is on different continents. It is emphatically denied that the Duke of York had any form of sexual contact or relationship with Virginia Roberts. Any claim to the contrary is false and without foundation. Well, I don't buy any of that for sure. Not one bit, okay? False and without foundation? No, it's built on a pretty stable foundation. If anything is built on a foundation that's going to give way, if anything 
is built on a foundation of sand. It's the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family story. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this article can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, we'll be back tomorrow and we'll rock it all out once again. I hope that everybody's having a great weekend. And if you're out tonight, please, like usual, do not drink and drive. Until tomorrow, everyone.